traditionally use 2D drawings throughout the planning and inspection process. However, many large OEMs now expect suppliers to use a 3D model-based definition for their manufacturing and quality. And we've advertised this presentation on our website as model-based definition for dummies. So the idea is to make it easier for you to integrate these 3D models into your quality process. Here to teach us more about that is Sam Golan, founder and CEO of HiQA. Sam's going to take us through how geometric dimensioning and tolerancing data, as well as product manufacturing information, can be intelligently extracted from 3D models, then modified and managed. We'll gain a better understanding of concepts associated with 3D model PMI and annotated data, and we'll learn what a streamlined, automated quality process looks like, from MBD to 2D ballooning and on through the final inspection report. If anyone has any questions, type them into the interface, and we'll do our best to answer them at the end of the presentation. We'll also be sending a link to a recording in case you missed something or just want to revisit, so keep an eye on your email. With all the housekeeping out of the way and without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Go right ahead, Sam. Thank you. Uh, and thank you all for taking the time today, uh, participating uh, Modern Machine Shop and High QA about a uh, model-based definition uh, webinar. On a personal note, for me, model-based definition is kind of part of a DNA, as I was part of uh, um, KitCam co-founders company in the mid 80s. And I spent more than 25 years in all types of manufacturing industries, automotive, aerospace, defense, medical, oil and gas, and others. Getting into the quality industry, I would say even accidentally, which is a story by itself, generated kind of a culture shock for me on how manual uh, is the process how many different system or solution needs to be used to complete the project from A to Z. And on top of that, now comes the model-based definition to a play, adding another layers of complexity to the uh, quality. Um, from from the, the time that the ancient pyramids and the classical Parthenon to the geodesic domes cars, airplanes, and space station of today, technical drawings have been playing a fundamental role in constructing humankind's progress. They carry clear and concise information without misinterpretation or assumption, remaining the traditional, traditional way of instructing what to make and how to make it. A set of technical drawings deliver all necessary information explicitly requiring no further instruction. Well, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers issued standard for annotation of 3D models and utilization of a 3D data <clears throat> as manufacturing information as early as 2003. We are talking about almost 20 years ago anticipating of the 2D drawings being phased out. I will share with you more that in 1981, at the STEP convention in Chicago, one of the STEP executives member stated at that time, in two years, meaning 1991, drawing will disappear. Now guess what? 90% of the industry, or more of course, bubble prints manually today, and what do we do when we are getting a 3D model from our customers or OEM? We actually, if we can open it, orient the model uh, and what we think is the right annotation or the right, uh, sorry, orientation, taking screenshot, fill up in pen and pencil what we believe is missing data. While MBD adoption does appear to be the next logical step towards achieving reduced time to market and higher product quality, MBD actually looks naive in present condition. Manufacturers are still struggling to transform their operation <coughs> digitally, but actually not just manufacturers are struggling. As a consultant to large enterprises, how to communicate MBD with suppliers, I can tell. MBD to manufacturing challenges starts with engineering. It's not about manufacturing. And why is that? Yeah. 
It is because model-based definition, and I'm talking about annotated model, not just IGES or STEP, it is just about a part description. Where and why it is. Because quality is about process. When my customer expect from me, the supplier, to deliver part on time, on quality, and on budget, as well as submission of a package consists of FAI, PIPA, gauge study, material certification, SPC data, you name it. And then there is a gigantic gap between MBD or model-based definition and quality process. Model-based currently is not a better solution for supplier, but a burden. OEM used to provide detailed 2D print with the model, a step or IGES, and always stated we expect receiving part based on the print and regardless of the step or IGES model we provided you. Today, MBD has no prints. Do we have all the information we need on the model? We will know the answer. Speaking about supplier or supply chain, getting only a model or model-based definition, no prints created by the OEM, present critical challenges associates, associates with extensive interpretation and massive labor compared to 3D model, either step or just we used to uh, receive with the prints. And this small picture, kind of the OEM engineer at any given industry, who is an extreme expert, extremely expert in designing a part or assembly, but he has minimal knowledge, if at all, on how this part going to be made or how it's going to be inspected. How many operation on CNC machine and other manufacturing step this part going to go through? And of course, how this part going to be inspected? What inspection tools needs to be assigned to this process? And, this, and the list is long. Designer will provide a finished part. And in many cases, with minimal or just critical dimension. From the designer point of view, we don't need more. When OEM complete hundreds of assemblies or parts with requirement package known as TDP, supply technical package, or in Boeing terminology, DPD, Digital Product Definition, and start communicating this requirement to Tier 1. And then from this tier, the parts will start propagating downstream to other tier, tier 2, 3, or 4. You will not be surprised that in most cases, OEM has no idea who is really making their parts or if the supplier is certified with any ISO requirement, and on top of it, does the supplier has the capability even opening OEM native model-based definition file. As mentioned, being more than two decades in all sizes and type of job show, when getting MBD, no prints, in this case, in this case, if supplier can open the model-based definition in all kinds of tools, case system or viewers, now is struggling with interpretation, reverse engineering, finding missing information, and guesses keep kick off. Practically, what happened, you can see here, the 3D model will be oriented on the screen with whatever system we could open it. Screenshot will be taken, and the printer become busy printing model views and missing dimension notes and other requirements will be added manually on the print views <clears throat> as the supplier generates. Or if we can read the CAD model or the model-based definition system, if we can do it, then we may have a CAD system as our OEM has. And if they have the same version, of course. Most probably, if we will be able to open the CAD model, we will start adding the missing dimension 
we will generate 2D prints. With either approach, it's hard to see on the shop floor any manufacturing or any machine operators works with model-based definition. And with this interpretation, you can see that when you go down from tier to tier, interpretation and issues are going to extrapolate it. And this can be very well explained in the next slide. We are going to talk a little bit about the 787, the supply chain fiasco. We all know what happened there. And this is a quote when we talk about supply chain fiasco is a quote from multiple manufacturing quality and supply chain expert. And I believe we're all familiar with the story of the 787. And you can read here a couple of, uh, I call it quotes. For instance, the second three months delay to the first flight of the Dreamliner plus six months delay to the first delivers that extended to four years. The second quote talks about outsourcing in general and supply chain create problem with language culture and extremely hard coordinate. And we have a plethora of problems. Things get outsourced, then they have to come back to Boeing to get fixed. And maybe the last one, Boeing company engineers blame 787's outsourced supply chain saying that poor quality components are coming from subcontractors that have operated largely out of Boeing views. So if we will look into this fiasco, talking about supply chain, it boils down to many issues that this project has. But if we're going to take two, the two main of them, first, in this project, Boeing decided no more prints, only 3D model-based definition. The other layer is that this project, or amazing airplane at the end of the day, is outsourced to seven different continents. And then it represents not just language barrier, also quality culture barrier, manufacturing barrier. So if you take all those, you got extrapolated of supply chain issues, but the model-based definition had the humongous uh, issue quality because it's associated with a lot of interpretation. If you look into this slide, Tech Clarity is an in independent research firm stated that 33% of the design time spent on 2D prints. And you look here, you can see 21 creating drying, 21% and 12% making changes. So tech claim, no need. It is already in the model. You don't need prints. This is what happened when you sit in an office interviewing people over the phone or sending questionnaires without understanding what is really manufacturing industry needs. And in this research group, we look into the entire manufacturing process. They will learn that creation of 2D drawing by quality team not only eradicates any time saving, but in many cases can double or triple the time supposedly saved. Edit also interpretation into it and many assumptions. Then you get those issues. The bottom line is model-based definition by OEM actually shifting their yesterday liabilities in providing detailed prints to the supplier, to the supplier. Now, this create a lot of issues and even increased in cost because yesterday you got a 2D print and 3D model, I just step, and you can start making parts. Now you have to invest in order to start even making parts to do all those operation to make it work. Um, 
if we will kind of summarize lightly the model-based definition challenges, on the left side, we're talking about multi-native model-based definition we may receive, CATIA, PROE, Siemens, others. Then, as mentioned, limited or just critical dimension. There is a lot of non-relevant model-based definition data that we need to clean because it's not relevant to our process. The other problem, how trusted is my import of MBD? How can I validate it? Then when I have it, it might have limited views that came with the model. And then if I'm getting CATIA, PROE or other, and I need step file to run my CNC machine, my CMM, then what I'm gonna do with it? And then having hidden dimension in different views that I needed from a different views, the list is long, but I try to summarize it here. Then once you have it done, ready, and you did all your manual processes struggling with model-based definition, then you have to apply all your quality process. Uh, you handle multipliers, tool assignment, missing dimension, in process inspection, SPC, and the list is long and long. So when we are talking on how the solution can work in a different way, um, so I will share with you how MBD can turn to be a seamless and automated solution with all quality processes connected and integrated to a one cohesive database driven solution. Um, so if you look into this slide, you can see on the upper left side, 2D slash 3D create part. MBD making a lot of noise in the industry, but actually is only the first step on the entire quality uh, processes. And as you see here, MBD is now connected and is part of entire quality life cycle. And quality life cycle is actually divided into two main processes, what we call the downstream preparation, and then it can be from 2D or 3D. Then there is data collection from shop floor, and then of course comes the reporting. So if uh, we'll jump into the uh, quickly all-in-one process, we can talk about database-driven application, API that integrate with outside third-party software like ERP, PLM, and others, layer of security, and here is the source, either 2D or 3D. It's part of a big process. And then comes the layer of PQP or APQP, as you all know, and then comes the big layer of functionality. If you look again into the, here, into the left upper in this block, you see model-based definition as part of a lot of capabilities and functionality because MBD is not just an MBD. It should be part of a complete quality process, which we will share shortly. Then come, of course, the assignment of the requirement to the shop floor supply chain, and then come the data uh, collection. What I would like, uh, well, quick short, high QA having 700 plus customers, many of them OEM, tier one, two, three, four, the whole supply chain um, industry. I would like to get into the, the solution with your permission. And again, feel free, as mentioned earlier, to uh, ask any question you would like me to cover after this uh, presentation. And I'm trying to get out from here and open my inspection manager. So, HiQA is a quality management system. It's a database driven and mentioned, and we support 2D or 3D, and we're gonna to focus today on the 2D, on the 3D, but you will see how 2D become to play even with the model-based definition. So when I'm clicking on, on open a print or 3D model, and I will go to MBD file, we have all kind of file and I can pick up, let's take NIST file, which all of them you probably know. And for instance, we can take um, CATIA 
And if we're going to take a TIA, we can take any of them, whatever it is. And now what happened, HiQA take the 3D, the MBD, with all the views created in CATIA and open it. And I believe you can see the screen and you can see the 3D part and all the views got here from CATIA, okay? I'll give you another example from the same part. We can go here and open can file from, let's take another, um, vendor, let's take uh, NX, for instance, same part by NX. You can see here with all the views that came with, and you can see here the same part. A little bit messy, more than what we got from Katia. It's not because of Katia or Siemens, it's because of the designer. And we mentioned, designer can do whatever they want for them, the part is ready but we have to work on it. Now we have only two views here, but the model-based definition of the high key way enables you to do a lot of, I will call it editing and preparation. For instance, if this is a very messy view and when you rotate it, it's hard to see where are all the dimension, you can do a simple step. You can go here and say, Auto PMI mapping. When I'm clicking on it, then the systems create a views mapping that's supposed to make sense. Like here, like here, or like here. You see here and you see here. Another option that can be done, actually, is if I would like to move one of the dimension, here I don't have any dimension, but one of the dimension or whatever is here, so if I will click on this dimension, and I can actually grab this dimension to whatever views I want, and now this dimension is added to this view. So the system enables me at this stage, and this is not this last stage, it's only what I call preparation for a 3D MBD to get into the quality process, which we are not there yet. Another way to look into it, let's say I have a lot of nonsense that I call it sometimes that I don't need for my quality, whatever it is, so I can go and just hide it because I don't need it in my quality process, right? And then, and maybe we'll clean this one, although it's a datum, I don't need it right now. So the system enables you to do a lot of things. Also, you may say, well, this view is very important for me. I need to see this view in my quality process. Click here and the system will add another view. And then of course you can drag dimension from one view to another and fill it up. Uh, I think another very important component when we talk about this process is I'm getting Creo, I'm getting Siemens native CAD, but I need step five. I need to run my CMM, I need to run my, or I need to read it into my CAM system. I don't have a converter, I don't have a translators. In one click, as you see here, the system exports the 3D model directly to step. As you see here on the screen, here is my step file. And you can use it, of course, for any other activities that you need. Um, another thing that can be done, and I don't want to, spend a lot of time, I can go from here and create what I call extract 3D GDNT and PMI. But in this case, I would like to take even a more challenging part with your permission. And let me open another part actually from Creo. Let me find out something from Creo. Um, let me see if we have here Creo files, maybe this one. Yeah, this is more challenging in my mind. So I'm opening again. It's Creo, Katia, Siemens, SolidWorks, Inventor. It doesn't matter. We take all of them. And here is, yeah, here is another 3D model. By the way, here you can see one of the, I call it the symptom 
that come from quality uh, engineering. For instance, you see here, we have 10.3 plus minus zero and three, four times. Of course, for designer, it's clear. We have four holes. I don't need to identify each one of them for you. Why should I do it? But in quality, I need to inspect each one of them. So that's the difference between part description and processes. And this is an example. Again, in this place, I can go and hide what I don't need. And again, you know already what I can do. Here, I can even go and create the same step I did. I would like to measure it, or I would like to prepare it in a better views. So the system now goes and create, I call it tangible views that make sense to me. It's organized the dimension in a way that I can see them, okay? And they give me a lot of sense. At this point, what I can do, I can go and extract the 3D to a 2D gd &T and PMI in one click. Now see what happened here. The system takes all this information and convert it actually to a 2D print because this is the place I can start real quality processes. And let's see what happened now. So look into it. Now we have it as a 2D print. If you look into the bit of characteristic that created automatically from 3D model, here are all the bit of characteristic of the part with all the GD&T and all the requirement. More than that, if we're going to touch this guy, balloon number four, you can see here four times 10.3, and you see the multipliers. And of course, talking about quality process, I would like to identify each hole. I can go and multiply it, right? And once I multiply it, right, then I can identify each hole that I need to inspect, right? This is not going to be part of my model-based definition. Again, you can do it if you have 50 holes, I'm not sure you want to see it. But here now on the bill of characteristic, the multipliers multiplied itself because I did it. So now you see four underscore one, underscore two, three and four. It's all identified. I can of course go and reset it and we are back where we are before. But in the database, all those requirements already there waiting to get four results. All the views, of course, are here, okay? And anything you will touch, you will see 100% identification on the bill of characteristic, right? Two times six, zero five, you can see here, you can see here, you see the GD&T parallelism is identified, okay? Radial, all the information is done. There is another option because we have multiple views that came from the print. I can go and even set it up in, um, I think it's going to be here, combined drawing. So I can go and take, a, let's say, A3, and I can just grab all the views here and again i can promise you that in the next version it will be done automatically including what we call personal title block because we cannot create title block out of the blue right so i can do this and i'm saying okay finish combining are you sure yes and now all the views are on one print as you see here okay now, we can do much more, talking about quality process. I mean, in this case, I can go and, and, for instance, touch this one, which is balloon number five, talking about diameter, 005. I can designate. I can go and say, hey, this is critical safety or major or key dimension. I need you to inspect it with specific tool, call it depth gauge, and save it. And I can go and create PDF from this print in one click, right? As you see here, too small. I can go and create inspection plan, right? In one click here.
And now here is inspection plan. And remember where we started. We started with 3D, with MBD, model-based definition. By the way, to share with you, I didn't touch the keyboard yet. I'm just working with my mouth. So everything is here. If you remember, I designated dimensions, uh, I think it was five. Yeah, the diameter, key dimension, I required depth gauge, and all we need is to get actual. And I can go even simulate the actual when we talk about short flow data collection. And let me do it with you for a quick second. Probably the way we will do it, I will export the part as a CSV. I'm going to simulate inspection results by, let's say, CMM. So I'm going to put it on the desktop. OK, and I'm going to, oops, I'm going to save it. I didn't do it right. Let me do it again. Export part, CSV. And this is the one, save. Yes, replace. OK, and let me open it. So now I'm simulating inspection results. So here is the nominal. OK, so I'm just taking the nominal, um, copying the nominal, and make this nominal actual. And of course, CMM generates CSV or XML or text file. Here is my actual. And I'm just copying, I think it's number nine. Yeah, I'm just copying the actual here, save it. And now we have inspection results simulated. So in high QA system, inspection results can come automatically into the system, either by clicking on file or machine data. In case you have tons of CMM, VMM, all kind of machine, the system will bring inspection results automatically. But I'm picking out the file that I created. And this is the file, thinking about CMM, all the results coming into the system in one click. And you see most of it painted green because it's simulated. I took uh, nominal and made it actual. By the way, you see all the results here with all the multipliers, the four times, the two times, because we simulated the result and the system simulated that we need to inspect all of it. But it might be that we will find here some gray I'm looking for something here. So now you can see this one probably is gauge, right? And gauge has no results because you cannot inspect gauge with CMM. So on the shop floor, of course, you can pick up any gauge. Okay, I'm taking gauge, whatever it is, and I'm saying failed. And then you will see that it's failed automatically on here. So everything can be done here. Let's assume that all inspection results in place and you would like to create first article. Click on it, single piece report. Then you have tons of um, form templates. And in one click, you can convert 3D model into first article. As you see here, here is the one that we failed, right? and all the rest of the results here. So what I try to do here is kind of illustrate what do you do when you get model-based definition, as you know, today, or what you can do with it tomorrow. On top of this, I will jump a little back and share with you another layer of capabilities, first on the 3D, and then I'll go back here on the 2D. I'll touch a couple of highlights. And then we will open this session to Q&A. Another thing that the system enables you to do when you have the 3D model, as you remember this screen as well, kind of at no cost, the system will go and create also what we call 3D. OK? 3D PDF. And what you can see here, is a 3D PDF. Let me click on the screen here so we will make it secure so we can trust it. Okay. And now you can see that this model created very messy because this is 3D, but you can go and see section A and you have what we call at no cost 3D viewer. 
that can be shared by everybody, okay? And that's additional layer what this system enables to do, converting any 3D to 3D PDF. I will go back a little bit to the 2D side and try to go over quickly on some other components in the system just to give you the idea on what can be done. Well, let me open it again. And this is, by the way, the database driven, as I mentioned. There is no more save in any type of folders. It's all saved automatically in uh, HiQA centralized database. A couple of things that you can do, which I would like to mention when you convert MBD, as you saw, to a 2D process, it's not just the FAI. There are other options that you can handle, of course. And I mentioned also uh, in my earlier uh, presentation, you can handle a lot of components like sampling, SPC. And by the way, you can start and like create now, for instance, at the beginning, SPC and set up CPK for this type of feature. Like here, you can create sampling by different lot size. So again and again, <laughs> What I'm trying to emphasize is when we talk about model-based definition, it is a part description, it is not a process. If you need to assign inspection tool and you have an integrated solution, that all your inspection tools is stored in one or the same database. So all your inspection tool is integrated to your process as well. The system, of course, will not enable to provide any inspection tool that is out of calibration. System, when we talk about integrated inspection tool, enables you to see usage history. So kind of what I'm trying to share here in a high level, but I believe um, detailed enough, how model-based definition that usually is like an disconnected model that you need to struggle with and convert it by interpretation, by screenshot, by pen and pencil, and then it's actually a paper connected to nothing, then suddenly, which is not very suddenly, all those features that recognize on the MBD side become real data okay in the 2d side enable you to complete process from a to z and with that i actually would like to kind of conclude this uh, session and uh, i would like also to ask modern man machine shop to lead us into q a if q a is open up. So thank you for taking the Great. Yes, yes, it, yes, it is, Sam. Uh, we have a number of questions here for you that uh, <laughs> attendees have been typing into the interface as you've been presenting here. Uh, and uh, just before we get started, I uh, just want to remind everybody that uh, that you, you can do that. So if you have a burning question, just go ahead and type it in, or even if you think of one uh, as we go through the list here, uh, go ahead. And then, of course, if, you know, the presentation concludes and you don't get your question answered or you want to revisit it later, it has been recorded. Uh, you can access that on mmsonline.com and everybody should also receive a link to it uh, via email. Uh, so, all right, let's, uh, uh, let's dive right in here. Let's see. Uh, so, okay. So the, uh, this, this question says the vast majority of CAM systems, uh, computer aid manufacturers that are, are nominally based. Uh, he says they wouldn't know what to do with MBD data if it is provided to them. Quote. Um, when do you believe that this will change? Um, I'm not sure I got this question right. Can you repeat, please? I'm going to have to read it. Direct. I thought maybe you would understand, but I, I guess he's saying that CAM systems are nominally based. Oh. And so they wouldn't know. 
it, it, I guess MBD data, uh, he implies it's sort of useless to them. They wouldn't know what to do with it, uh, as he puts it. I uh, then, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that make more sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I didn't hear the first word, CAM system. Oh, so yeah. So when when do you when do you think this will change? Uh, when when will these systems be able to uh, uh, to, to to work with with MBD? Um, I can just guess, as anybody can guess. Um, I think the problem is the problem resides mainly, and I mention it in my slides, not on the supplier side, it resides on the OEM side or your customer providing the model-based definition. Mm -hmm. um, talking to multiple large enterprises and OEMs that we are consulting to, um, the biggest problem is not manufacturing. The biggest problem is OEM side, the engineering side, if you will because the model is coming partially annotated, critically just annotated. And if you're going to take the model as is, push the button and make the part, zero tolerance, you should have it. But this is not our life. So the problem is also when we talk about machining or CAM system, in CAM system, until you get to the finish part, and this is actually what you get from your OEM, you have multiple operations. So it's hard for me to see when it will happen because someone needs to annotate in process inspection. But I don't know if this part is going to be made at the same operation between two, three, four suppliers. Each one of them has different machine. Each one of them will do it differently. I don't think the solution is there. The solution mm -hmm. is when we have a fully annotated model, which we are trying to educate OEMs, and it's hard to educate engineers because they don't know mm -hmm. how this part is going to be made. So what we do, and this is, I didn't get into it, but um, I may jump with your permission. I'm sorry that I'm taking your time a little bit. But when we talk about model-based definition, and also here, and we talk about manufacturing operation. You probably can see my screen still, guys. I believe you can see my screen, right? Yes, 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 we can see it, yeah. Uh, and you see here, when you get the model and we convert it to a 2D, you see a manufacturing operation. So in this case, we enables you to say, okay, my operation one, I'm playing this one and this one and this one, okay? And the system will create operation directly here. So you can add operation as we go based on what we extracted from the 2D print, right? And if you go here now and you would like to create inspection sheet for operation, right? Now you can see that operation sheets created. I don't want to spend time only on these questions, but I don't see how it's going to be resolved in the near future, but there is a solution here for manufacturing as well. Hmm. So this question strikes me as similar, not only in content, but also in the fact that I, I hope that I can convey what the questioner means to you. This is stretching my, <laughs> my, my subject matter knowledge here, but I, uh, let's give it a shot. So he says, uh, actually that goes for a number of these. So if I butcher them, go ahead and uh, uh, the questioners are free to type back to me and try to clarify here. But uh, the question is, so MBD is mainly defined at the piece part, uh, but uh, really, you know, the context of manufacturing, you know, goes on beyond that. He says it's often between parts. Um, so the question is, how do you see tools extending their context of definition uh, to fully appraise the multi-part relevance of MBD? So how do you extend this beyond just a single part and, and take into account the full context of, uh, you know, whatever the multi-part project you're manufacturing? I may, may answer it very simple. When you have bomb bill of material, and we support also this, I don't want to jump again, but we support multi-parts families that create an assembly. And when you get uh, requirement 
for inspection from your OEM to check certain assembly level, then it can be made here as well. So the short answer, we can associate multiple parts to a bomb bill of material. Even more than that, if bomb is created in ERP system or PLM system, as a repository of a data, it's a metadata, we can bring it into Inspection Manager, IQ8, and create all this associated data to the bill of material for assemblies. So that's also can be supported. Okay. Uh, now, as we all know, uh, you know, most people in machining, especially datums, you know, are, uh, uh, influence how parts are positioned in metrology fixing that, that tells you know the, the equipment where it's at uh does inspection manager software guide fixturing based on on datums is that it's mainly done on this it's mainly done on the cmm side uh, not on the inspection manager side although we can take care of it to the extent uh and by the way Anyone who would like to dive deeper into feature function, you see the email here or the address, we can do at any time, you know, more detail one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that, that's a great idea. And, I, and as you can see, the, uh, the, the, con the contact information is up there. Um, we still, do, still, do have, still have a number uh, of questions to go through here. Uh, let's see here. So, all right. If it, if an NX feature fails one of its instances, um, how does inspection manager indicate which specific instance failed? Uh, is there a link between the report and the model, or a means to expand the NX callout to individual references for flagging? The when when feature failed, it failed into the quality process side not back to the model because when we bring annex model in inspection manager it's no more annex it's a model now the model that we bring into inspection manager from any native CAD is completely validated and it's 100 percent converted into high qa and we will probably in the next version once feature fail we will definitely indicate it on the model as we bring it into high qa so you can see it on the model side not on the nx side that we imported into high qa but you can see it on the model on the extracted model even more importantly as if you remember when we import model from NX or any native kit, it already bubbled, already ballooned by us. And then the balloon on the 2D and the balloon on the 3D are identical. So whatever failed in the 2D inspection process, then you're going to see it on the 3D model because we are carrying the same ID for relevant features. Ah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, we got one more here. There are a couple others that I'm going to uh, let off for offline. They, they look rather technical. And as you mentioned earlier, it might be uh, better to uh, take those offline. But uh, so just to conclude here, is the, uh, so assuming the, the software is, oh, we just got another one. Maybe we can do two. Uh, but uh, to start, it, it, assuming the software is connected to the uh, MBD, the model-based definition file, what happens if that model changes? Uh, does the does the software update? What happened actually is when we bring another model, which is a new revision of the model, then it's converted again to the 2D print because on the 2D print, you may, you do actually what we call quality processes that you don't see it on the model yet or anymore. So once we converted the new revision of a model into a 2D print, we have a what we call compare and revision control function 
that actually take the new revision of the 2D prints that convert it from the model based. And we do automated comparison between the two version of the converted print. And then we communicate with the user about where are the changes and all those revision stored in HiQA database or in your PLM system. So there is a automated tool to compare between revision and that's managed by IQA. Okay. Uh, can you comment on the, uh, the the new quality information framework? Uh, I understand this to be a, sort of a standard, a new standard for uh, exchange of, of quality information. Um, this questioner just wants to know uh, if the software uh, leverages that at all or takes advantage of that, and if so, how? Um, just to make sure that we are talking about the same thing, probably it's QIF. Yeah, QIF, yeah. Quality information framework. Well, I have to admit that I was one of the, I was part of the initiator of the QAF that's approved by NIST recently. Yes, we comply with QIF. Um, and QIF, it's a, it's a very good standard as long as all the participants are going to comply with QIF. We are as an high QA. But if you are getting inspection quality requirements or you are getting 3D from your native kid and they are not participating to the QIF, then the leak is broken. If you are sending QIF to your CMM and one CMM vendor is not comply with, the link is broken. So QIF, going to be a great solution as long as all parties are participating uh, and, and complying or supporting this standard. So it's a great standard, like no doubt. Standard, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, how are CAD models being uh, translated and validated? Is there some sort of translator uh, uh, function in the tool that's being used? Yes. There is an engine. It's not our proprietary engine, but we are using a very known engine with a great business partner, TechSoft, which they are working with many CAD companies. And we rely on their capabilities and compatibility, which we checked and we found out that they are having, like I would say, the best conversion tool that many CAD systems are using for different application and importing data from other CAD system. So this is our uh, conversion technology. Of course, on top of this technology, we added hundreds of thousands of code lines to make it <laughs> the application as you saw. So when you convert the model, then you see ballooning, that's not part of the conversion. But the key is, to convert the model and being 100% sure that all the information is converted, which it is. And you can see that we are getting information that we even don't need, which are reside on the 3D, but we can hide it and clean it and prepare it for a quality process. Okay, well, these keep rolling in. Uh, we do have a few minutes, so keep them coming. If, uh, if you come up with questions, uh, the what is currently the final one, but maybe not, is uh, does the software uh, have the ability to identify features that are not tolerance with a range or with uh, GD&T, uh, such as features that might be overlooked by uh, designers? Yes, absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that would Easy. be uh, the ballooning <laughs> function, correct? Yeah, <laughs> Great. absolutely. Great. All right. Go ahead. No, no, I'm, I'm here waiting. Oh, all right. Well, that I'm going to wrap it up here because there are only a couple more and uh, they might end up like that first one where uh, I'm not a, quite sure what the questioner is asking. And it appears to be referring to like specific portions of the presentation and slides that uh, it, it just might take a while to figure these out. So these might be better handled offline. But uh, yeah, the contact information is there. If anybody uh, uh, comes up with anything else. 
Um, thank you all for attending. Uh, thank you, Sam, for the presentation. Thanks to High QA for putting this on. I hope everybody learned a lot. And uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everybody.